Welcome to Blue Marble Geographic's Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and today I'm joined by my colleague Mackenzie Mills, the technical content writer here at the company. Today, Mackenzie will be talking to us about LiDAR analysis and the Pixels to Points tool. All right, Mackenzie, take it away. The Pixels to Points tool in Global Mapper is a great way to take a set of drone collected or UAV collected images and process them into a few different 2D and 3D outputs. All you really need to get started with this process in Global Mapper is a set of these drone collected or UAV collected images. I have an image set here loaded into my workspace and I have the actual individual image layers grouped in the control center for a little bit of file organization. I also have a tile of publicly available low resolution imagery in here for context. Um, here we're looking at a sports field area next to a school here in Maine. To explore these drone collected images, I can use the feature info tool in Global Mapper to select any one of them. And, doing, and when doing this, a couple things happen. The first thing is that an image coverage polygon pops up in our workspace, and this is based on the coordinate location of the camera when the image was captured and the camera parameters. Um, this is approximating the coverage of this particular image. The second thing that happens is that in the default picture viewer for my machine, the image opens so we can preview this image and take a closer look at it. I can do this for a few images within this set and we can see from the coverage polygons that we've got a good amount of overlap between the images. And then in the preview, when the image opens, we see that we've got a clear image here again with identifiable features. It looks like a high quality image. That's great because those are two pretty main requirements for working with images in the Pixels to Points tool. The images need to have a good amount of overlap between them. We recommend about 60 to 70% or higher. And the images themselves need to be of good quality. Um, they need to be clear in focus and have identifiable features here. It looks like we're meeting those requirements so far. So we can go ahead and open the Pixels to Points tool and start in on this process. So to open the Pixels to Points tool, we can do so from the LiDAR toolbar here with our toolbar button and a new dialog opens in Global Mapper. The first thing we'll do here is load our images, our drone collected images into this tool. We can do that from the file menu, either loading images from a file, loading an entire folder of images, or just importing our loaded picture points from our workspace. I'll choose this option and as these files load, we'll see that the input image files list here in the pixels to points tool dialog populates. We have the coordinate location of each image, a little bit of camera information and resolution. And as I click on any of these images from the input image list, we see them in the image preview here. We can zoom and pan in this image preview to explore our images further just within this dialog. If as I'm working through my images here, I find one that maybe isn't of good quality, it's out of focus or in a study area that I'm not interested in, I can uncheck that from the input image list and it won't be considered in the um, process here. Below our input image files, we have the opportunity to add some ground control points. Now we can do this from a text file here or we can import control points from a loaded point layer. I have a few ground control points represented in my workspace, so I'll load these from a layer. And selecting the correct layer here, we see that our ground control points list populates. With a ground control point selected from this list, we also see that the image list, our image entries and our input image files list, um, a few of them change in color here. We've got some represented in green now. Clicking on one of those images, this is Global Mapper suggesting that this particular control point appears somewhere in this image. This is based on those image coverage polygons we previewed with the feature info tool and the coordinate location of this control point. To add the control point to image, we'll click that button and we can zoom in in the preview and just click to place that control point. Once a control point has been placed in an image, the image is now listed in blue, indicating that the control point is already present there. Ideally, you'll want to go through and place a control point in each image where each control point appears. This will help better tie your images to those ground control points and increase the accuracy of the output, really getting the most that you can out of the surveyed ground control points you're working with. 
Below our two lists here, we have the outputs that we can generate from the pixels to points tool. So what are we gonna get out of this tool? Well, our primary output is a point cloud output. We're taking those pixels from the UAV collected images and transforming them into points in our point cloud. This works with a structure from motion process. So Global Mapper goes through and finds matching pixel patterns in overlapping images, and then based on the position and the camera parameters, is able to calculate, triangulate those points in space and place them to create our 3D output here. Below that, we have the option to create an ortho image. Well, we can ortho rectify each of these images individually, um, it won't create a nice seamless image, which we may be looking for. Creating an ortho image here through the pixels to points tool will create a more seamless image and it will use some of that location information from that structure for motion process that was um, gathered in the creation of the point cloud. Our third output here is a mesh or 3D model. So this is a vector mesh or model feature that's going to be textured with our drone collected images here. So two 3D outputs and one image or 2D output uh, can be generated with this tool. You don't need to create all three of those outputs. You can uncheck any of these boxes and only create, create the outputs that you're interested in. By default, when you go to select a location for these outputs, um, you're gonna be able to set that as a global mapper package file. So this is a global mapper format. It's versatile. It can, can contain different types of data and packages all three of the outputs into one file to be loaded into global mapper when the process completes or shared with a colleague. In the last corner of our pixels to points tool dialog here, we have some options to set up how the process runs. So here we've got a few options to manage memory and computer, computer resources as Global Mapper is going through and creating these more complex outputs. So we can reduce the image size and this will downsample the source drone collected images. Um, so you'll lose a little bit of detail there, but it will use less memory when the process um, works and it will speed up the creation of those outputs. Similarly, there is the option to enable clustering. So this is really applicable when you're working with larger Im image sets that have a high amount of overlap. We say generally over 150 images or more. And this works by creating smaller chunks of images, clustering those images into groups, creating some data from those, and then blending those clusters together for a final seamless output. There's also the option to save work files to allow resuming canceled operations. So this incrementally saves some temporary files as the pixels to points tool is working. So in the event you have to stop the process for some reason, you can resume the process without having to start from scratch here. Below that, there are two options for the analysis method. So how the structure for motion process works in, in order to create these outputs. Uh, the first is incremental. So this takes a few images at first, finds those similar pixel patterns, places some points in 3D space, and then brings in some more images, adjusts existing points, and finds new ones until all the images have been considered. On the other hand, the global method uh, works better for images, image sets that have a very high amount of overlap, and this works by considering all of the images at once in order to find those pixel patterns, those match points, and place points in 3D space. When you have all the options set in the pixels to points tool here, go ahead and click run and that will kick off this process and Global Mapper will start building those outputs. I have a Global Mapper package in this workspace as well that has our pixels to points outputs in it. Turning off a few layers and expanding our Global Mapper package layer here, we have our three outputs, the point cloud, the ortho image, and the mesh. We'll take a look at this point cloud first and I'll actually turn off the drone collected images so we can take a closer look. And this is similar to LiDAR data. This is points in 3D space and we can look at this data in the 3D viewer. These points have been colorized with the colors from our drone collected images. And as we can zoom in here, we see that this is a fairly dense point cloud. We've got a lot of points representing this field area that we're interested in. Along the edges of the study area, we see we have trees, and these are a little bit more fragmented because they're not as well captured in the original image set. Our second output is the generated ortho image. 
Now, in the, this is a 2D output, and in that 2D view, it looks very similar to the point cloud. Um, turning on that tile of low resolution, publicly available imagery, we can use the image swipe tool to compare these image layers here. And we can see that generated ortho image is a much higher resolution imagery with a lot more detail to it. On top of that, you know, creating these outputs in Global Mapper from those drone collected images, you know exactly when these images were collected. So we know exactly what point in time this image is capturing a snapshot of. Our third output for this set is a generated mesh feature. Again, in the top down view, it looks very similar to the point cloud and ortho image. But in 3D, this is a 3D output. Again, looking similar to the point cloud, but we see it looks a little bit more solid. This isn't a creation of individual points. This is a more seamless mesh feature. Taking a look at the wireframe view in the 3D viewer, we can see the shapes and triangles used to create this solid mesh feature. Now, with any of these outputs generated from the Pixels to Points tool. They're in this global mapper package by default, but you can export these to individual layers to different formats in order to share or process them further. Particularly with the point cloud, uh, this point cloud can be classified like you would a LiDAR collected point cloud. Um, a, a, a elevation grid can be created and um, any you know further products from that can be derived as well. So this is a great way to bring new data into Global Mapper, create some data uh, yourself, and just continue processing it in the program. Mackenzie, thank you so much for talking to us today about LiDAR analysis and the Pixels to Points tool in Global Mapper Pro. For more information on Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, please visit bluemarblegeo.com today and see what it can offer you. And as always, thank you so much for joining us for Ask the Experts and be sure to stay tuned for our next episode.